So with this, uh, let's move to our next speaker. And our next speaker is uh, Haruka Sakamoto. And uh, she uh, has been, she is a senior fellow at the Tokyo Foundation for Policy Research. And she has been tightly involved in the work of the G7 Health and the G7 in preparation for, for the uh, Hiroshima uh, summit this year. And I must say that to us in the global health community, uh, achievements in the declarations of the Health G7 and of the G7 have been remarkable in the tense climate uh, of negotiations that we currently face. So Haruka, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, so Japan hosted G7 summit this year in the Hiroshima and then pandemic preparedness was one of the major topic at the G7 this year. But in 2016, Japan hosted the last G7 summit. Pandemic preparedness was also a main topic. At that time, there was an Ebola virus outbreak in the West African countries. And then the significant amount of discussion has been made how we can prepare for the future pandemics. Since then, many effort has been done for preventing the, another pandemic. But as we all know, we could not prevent the COVID-19. So in this backdrop, Japanese government again picked up pandemic preparedness is one of the key topic at the G7 with a specific focus on governance, financing, and global rule making. First is about governance. I think this is not only the issue for the health sectors, but if any kind of global crisis happens, such as climate change, energy crisis, or recent Gaza situation, who or which country or which organization to taking a leadership role is a really difficult question. I think this is the same to the health sector. So if the pandemic of the global scale happens, which country or which organization or who takes the leadership role is a really, really big issue. Of course, we have the WHO, but as just Michelle mentioned, now global pandemic or global health is not only the issues within the health sector, but this is intertwined with several other sectors. In this regard, which, or which organization, which country, or who taking leadership role is a really, really big issue in the governance. So Japanese government pick up the governance of the pandemic preparedness as one of the key points of the, this year's summit. And of course, we have the WHO, where health ministers across the globe gathers and then discuss with the technical aspect of the pandemic preparedness. But this year's G7 also highlighted the importance of having a higher level, head of the state's level dialogue platform, which head of the states of the each country discuss not only the impact on the health sectors, but also the pandemic poses on the other sectors, such as trade or economy. And next point is about financing. We need money in order to prevent spread of the viruses. But question is, who make a financial contribution to the global pandemic? Especially like the COVID-19, many high-income countries are also largely affected by the COVID-19. And then those countries has no, not adequate capacity to financially support low and middle income countries. In that case, who or which country make a financial contribution to a global scale? So G20, not G7, took a leadership role and then created the new financing mechanism, so called a pandemic fund. <coughs> and that this is the basic idea of the pandemic fund is asking the donor country to make a financial contribution to the pandemic fund. And then G7 this year also highlighted importance of the pandemic fund and then actually financially contributed to the pandemic fund and then showing their support to the pandemic fund. But still, because the, since after the Lehman shock, the money coming from the G7 countries or traditional donor country has been stagnated. 
And then when global scale of pandemic happened, the money coming from the, those traditional donors is not adequate at all. And we really need to mobilize resources other than G7 countries, including the private sector or market. And then there is a still ongoing debate that how we can mobilize the money from the private sector or market as an ongoing debate. And we really need to consider such kind of the financial mechanism. And the third one is about the global rulemaking, which Michelle already explained in detail about the pandemic treaty. And I think this is not an easy roadmap to agree upon the pandemic treaty because there is so many conflicting interests between or among countries. But again, this year of the G7, I think G7 is a country with a shared value showing the support for the pandemic treaty as kind of the sending a political message that we need to unite in order to prevent for the future pandemics. I also would like to highlight the importance of the innovation of the pharmaceuticals. So when next pandemic happens, and if we can create vaccines more quickly, we can save more lives, which is good. So of course, innovation is a key for the future pandemics. At the same time, there are many challenges and concerns regarding the innovation for the pharmaceuticals. First one is the supply chain risks. Second one is technological transfer together with intellectual property rights issues. And the third one is equitable access and delivery. First one is the supply chain risks. So now, most of the all pharmaceuticals, its ingredients or original materials are largely rely on China. And any country, even the United States, cannot complete the supply chain of the pharmaceuticals without China and which now recognize as a kind of the security risks. And then there's now considering how we can secure or diversify the supply chain is one issue. And second point is the technological transfer. So even if we succeed in the vaccination research and development, we need to do several millions of vaccination. But usually country does not have such manufacturing capacities. So whenever a global pandemic happens, we need to collaborate with a country having the manufacturing capacity at a large scale, such as China, India, or South Africa, or several other countries. But rapidly transferring the new technology is not always a concern, especially together with the intellectual property rights. So we also need to enhance the capacity at a global scale Together, we need to consider how we transfer those technology at a timely manner. And then we also need to consider how we deal with the intellectual property rights, especially during the pandemic. And lastly, about the equitable access and delivery of the vaccines. I think that this point has already uh, echoed with the other panelists, but the equitable access was a very key issue during the COVID-19. So many high-income countries bought a huge amount of vaccine, while the low-income countries has no access to the such vaccination. So we also need to create how we secure the equitable access and delivery of the, those medical countermeasures. So lastly, I'd like to touch upon the relationship between the climate change and then health, which are already mentioned from the assistant health ministers. So health sector also emits significant amount of the CO2. So if health sector is a country, the total amount of emission of CO2 is the fourth largest in the world. During the COVID-19, thanks to the vaccination, we could save many lives. But at the same time, there was a huge amount of medical waste and put a significant burden on the environment. So before, had a sector only to concentrate saving lives anyway. But now, had a sector is also recognized that had a sector also have a load to the climate change, which means we need to prepare for the future pandemic. We need to promote innovation for the pharmaceuticals, or we need to attain equitable access of the pharmaceutical while we need to decrease the greenhouse emission, or we need to attain net zero emission in the health sector. 
But let's think that. Is it really possible that we deliver a debaction at the last one mile of the every country with no green gas emission? I think this is a really quite tough question, but we need to consider it. So in the conclusion, I think the, uh, the question to the, uh, are we ready for the future pandemic? I think there is still no, but we need to learn from the lessons from the COVID-19. And then also now, we need to think about the climate change perspective whenever we do something for the future pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Haruka. Um, and thank you to Japan for uh, emphasizing so strongly equity um, in the G7 uh, and also uh, in, in New York. I, I heard uh, Minister Takemi uh, speak and equity was always at, at the top and the forefront of his interventions. Our last